Hello and welcome to Hi-Rises Explained. As stated in this video, I wish to showcase every high-rise building in Norway and there is somewhere around 340 of them as of 2023, according to my latest and up-to-date information. But if I'm going to do that, I first need to explain what I mean by a high-rise building, as there is no official definition agreed upon by all with two lines under. There are several definitions that are quite similar, but differ in some aspects. Some include physical height, while others just use the floor count. Defining a high-rise simply as a tall building is meaningless, as what tall is will vary greatly from person to person and from the environment it's located in. A 10-floor building can feel very tall in a small town, while not even be noticeable in a downtown setting. Encyclopedia Britannica defines it like this, a multi-story building tall enough to require the use of a system of a mechanical vertical transportation, such as elevators. It also says something about construction materials and foundations. This definition is way too broad for my purpose, and sort of useless when trying to distinguish high-rise buildings from nearly any other modern uh, multi-story building. But let's start with the basics. What is a building? What makes a building different from other built structures? This parking garage is considered to be an open-air structure, a protective roof, or, or several levels of it in this case, but without exterior walls. From this we can infer that the building is a fully enclosed structure, of course usually with windows and doors to the outside. Some places, buildings have a parkade at the lower floors. I'm looking at you Cape Town, but we won't encounter this phenomenon in this series, I think. Okay, so that makes this church a building. But is it a high-rise? Intuitively, I would guess most people would say no. But why? Well, because a high-rise is a multi-story building, divided into floors at regular intervals, usually with a floor plate to floor plate height of between 2.5 to 4 or 5 meters. And these floors should be designed for continuous occupation. Okay, so now we're sort of back at the Encyclopedia Britannica definition, but I needed to take this detour in order to explain why churches, silos, TV towers and many other structures doesn't make the cut, and with a few exceptions will not be featured on this channel. On my Instagram account, on the other hand, I'm more liberal and will feature more uh, categories of tall structures. So now I have basically described what most people would consider just a regular building. So where does the high-rise part come in? What makes a high-rise any different from any other multi-story building? It all comes down to floor count and or height, and this is where the controversy might arise. Usually the minimum number of floors needed in order to classify a building as a high-rise is 10 or 12. Nothing magical happens uh, when a building reaches 10 or 12 floors. It doesn't suddenly take on some completely different attributes. But this is where uh, some, usually a city planning department or the CTBU age, has drawn the line. I will use 12 floors as the minimum for a building to be counted as a high-rise. This is also the definition used by the Oslo planning department, which has been adopted around the country. This is also the definition used by online communities uh, and uh, online databases as well. Making the complete definition look like this. And remember, this is the criteria I will go by. But if you want to make your own high-rise videos, feel free to make up your own. Some also use a physical height limit of minimum 35 meters or 115 feet, but I will not be doing that for the simple reason that it sometimes can be really tricky to get the correct height measure. Of course, I strive to research every building so I can include the height, but sometimes it's simply too difficult to get it correctly. And quite a few new office buildings with maybe just 9 floors would then be counted and messing everything up. How to measure height I will talk about in another video. Counting floors is a lot easier. Well, mostly. Norway is a hilly country and many high-rises and would-be high-rises are built in hillsides on sloping terrain. Take this non-high-rise as an example. Is this part uh, the first floor? No, you start to count on one, not G or whatever. Or is it a basement floor? 
According to the Norwegian government, and I guess many other authorities use the same or something very similar, uh, a floor is underground if the interior ceiling is less than one and a half meters above the average terrain height surrounding the building, and if it isn't used for a main purpose, like residential or offices. A typical use in a basement floor could be maintenance, parking, laundry or the ever-present air ride shelter. Well, that was a mouthful, but I think I covered all the bases, except for one. What is a skyscraper then? Well, basically a skyscraper is a really tall high-rise building. The most common criteria is that a building needs to be at least 150 meters tall, but I've also seen 100 meters used. That was before the full force of the construction boom in China and the United Arab Emirates hit the high-rise community. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video entertaining or educational, not slightly annoying or at least a worthwhile waste of time, please consider subscribing and or giving the video a thumbs up. And follow me on Instagram at Explained for some additional content. If you are a professional in the construction industry, have access to a high rise or a great view to one, or if you think you can contribute to this project in any way, feel free to contact me. Again, thank you so much for watching and you'll see me again in a later video.